Okay, so this is a typical waveform, and then what we, this is what we're going to talk about today. The waveform is the green line in the middle. There's all the controls and numbers around it, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's just look at the waveform itself. The first thing I want to talk about is what the waveform is. It's a graph of what you've been like you've been used to, but let's look at what the axes of this graph are. The axes are not going to be labeled when you look at electronics waveforms. So let's draw the axes in blue here. So the vertical axis is there and the horizontal axis is here. So we know the horizontal axis, because if I erase a little bit, little portion of it, you see that dotted green line? That's why we know where the horizontal axis is. The vertical axis, um, you'll see um, basically th this waveform is moving, so it, the vertical axis can be drawn anywhere. So the horizontal axis is the axis of time. And the vertical axis is the axis of volts. So an electronic signal is just volts over a period of time. And that's how it's plotted here. So let's look at a few of these properties of this waveform before we uh, get started on how to create it and how to modify it. So a couple properties. Let's go over period first. So period is the time it takes for the waveform to create one full cycle or to go through one full cycle. And so if you look from peak to peak, that's one full cycle. Or you can look from um, valley to valley, where I'm drawing now, which is another full cycle. But the big thing to know, too, is period, for some reason, we label it big T. OK, so that's the period. It's the time it takes a waveform. And remember that we're looking in, in the horizontal direction, so it's time. So period is the time it takes a waveform to complete one full cycle. Okay. The other thing we're going to look at, the other property we're going to look at, is the peak-to-peak -peak volts and the peak volts. So um, we can start with the peak volts. So we go from the horizontal axis to the very tip top of the waveform, and that's going to be the peak volts. And then the peak to peak volts is basically from the highest peak to the lowest valley. And the peak volts and the peak to peak volts are measured in volts. OK, so there's a sort of a picture of our waveform. So before we do anything else, what we're going to do is we're going to save that ink so that's going to go ahead and we're going to save that ink. And now we're going to clear it and close it. So we're going to close it out now. So now, um, now that we know all the properties of our waveform, we can um, play around a little bit with what's going on here. So let's talk about first what, how we create and how we view electrical signals such as this one. So down below, there's two pieces of equipment that are, um, that are displayed here. And they're usually connected by a, a wire. And you'll do this in, in the lab. But down below, if we want to draw a little blue line separating them, down below this blue line is one piece of equipment. So that piece of equipment is the function generator. So the function generator is um, used to um, produce signals. So function generator, we can see it says function generator right here. And this produces signals or makes signals. Okay, so that's what the function generator does. Up here, the very top of the blue line, and actually we have to write it in, it's actually the oscilloscope. And we'll, we'll just actually f highlight that up top. So the oscilloscope is what this is, and this only views. So whenever you're looking at the oscilloscope, all you're doing is viewing the signal in a different way. You're not creating a signal with the oscilloscope. All you're doing is viewing it. So again, the function generator produces the signal, and the oscilloscope views the signal. OK, so let's look at a few of the different options we have with both of these. Let's first look at the um, function generator. So the big thing with function generator is 
um, first we can look at, we can do different types of, um, let's get rid of our ink layer. First we can do different types of signals. So there's a square signal, there's a triangle signal, we could do a random signal or a noise signal. But we're going to stick with the sinusoid for this um, discussion here because it's the easiest one to see. The other thing we can do is we can um, do something called the frequency. So the frequency, and this is something that um, we didn't go over before, but the frequency equals 1 over the period, or 1 over t. Okay, so remember the period is the distance between the spaces. So since they're like this, if we up the frequency, if we increase the frequency, that makes the distance between the um, humps or the peaks smaller. If we lower the frequency, let's just keep lowering it, it makes the distance between the peaks bigger. Okay, so that's how what, that's what frequency is. And let's go ahead and put it up to something where we can see it a little more easily. Okay, great. Now, amplitude is um, how big the sine wave is. So if we look, if we make amplitude smaller, the sine wave gets smaller, the sinusoid gets smaller. And again, if we make it bigger, it gets bigger. So that modifies the peak-to-peak -peak voltage and the, um, the peak voltage. So let's go ahead and um, show the last thing here, which is DC offset. DC offset just shifts your picture. So it's, it's good to, um, to view signals that might not um, sit right at the center of the, um, of the um, spectrum. So that DC offset just shifts your sinusoid up or down in volts. Okay. All right, so that was the function generator. So again, the function generator um, creates signals. So now let's look at the oscilloscope. So the oscilloscope has a bunch of different knobs. The first one we're going to look at is the time scale knob. So think about it like this. Remember, the oscilloscope can only view signals. So what we're going to do is zoom in and out here. So if we do, if we do different time scales, we're just zooming in and out. So if we turn this knob to the left, we're zooming out. Okay. And if we move it to the right, we're zooming in. Okay, so what's happening here? All that's happening is we're changing what's called um, the time per division. So here you can see, if you look at the right to the left of the time scale knob, there's um, a time scale that says 5 milliseconds. So what that 5 milliseconds means is that's the 5 milliseconds is the space between two vertical lines. So that means this distance is 5 milliseconds. Okay. Now, the, the, the channel 1 knob underneath the timescale knob for voltage is the same thing. That's going to actually change. We're going to look at channel 1. That's going to change not the distance between the vertical lines, but the distance between horizontal lines. So let's look at that. So in this case right now, this is 500 millivolts. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, look at that for a second. But what we're going to do now is, me is mess with the um, voltage per division line. So mess with that 500 millivolts and see what happens. So let's get rid of the ink layer. And let's go ahead and look at what happens when we do that. So this is going to change how it zooms in in the um, vertical direction because volts are in the vertical direction, right? So we can see this is zooming in and out. And we can see that it's changing the channel 1 volts per division in that upper left-hand corner. Okay, so we're going to keep it right in the middle there for now. Okay, so now we've gone through all that. At the very beginning of this video, I introduced some concepts, some waveform properties. What I want to go back over now is what those waveform properties, um, how you can get them from an oscilloscope and a function generator like this. So we're going to set a couple things. We're going to set this at 10, uh, 10 hertz. 
So we're going to keep going. So we'll go down. And actually, so we'll just do, um, I'm sorry, we'll do 50 hertz. So this, um, so this function generator is a little bit different. What it does is it takes um, the 0.5 hertz that you see on the left here and multiplies it by the right-hand knob. So this is a, so right now this is 50 hertz. Okay. So what we're going to do now is try to figure out what all of our things are. So first let's try to zoom in so we get a better picture of what's going on. So that's, that's a good zoom level for that. Let's um, also let's set our um, amplitude down here to one and a half volts. Okay. And then this looks like a pretty good zoom level. We could also zoom out a little bit to see it like that, but let's zoom that way. Okay, so now we have a good picture of both of our, of our waveform. And now we need to identify the properties. So let's go ahead and look first for the period. So remember, the period is the time it takes in between here. So this is the T, or the period. Now we know that one of these boxes is 10 milliseconds. Okay? So if we count how many boxes are in between here and here, there's definitely a full one, and there's two half ones. So there's two boxes. So two boxes, and basically, and that's times 10 milliseconds per box. Okay? So what that gives us is 20 milliseconds is our period. Okay? So that's our period. So our frequency... Remember, frequency equals 1 over the period. So 1 divided by 20 milliseconds equals um, 500 hertz. So frequency is, um, the unit is hertz, which is also uh, cycles per second. So it's 1 over seconds. Okay, so there's, so there's how we get that. And that's good because that matches what we had set it on the function generator. And it always should. That's a good check. So now let's look at our voltage. Our voltage is our channel 1. It's 500 millivolts per division. So again, that means the distance between here and here is 500 millivolts. Okay. So what I want to do here is see that the peak voltage is three of those boxes, so that's 1.5 volts. And the peak to peak, which is here, so the peak to peak voltage is three volts. So that's how you can see what the, from a certain waveform, you can see what the properties are. Now, we sort of cheated because we know what, we're, what signal we're producing down here. But for your homework and for real life situations, you might not know what the signal is that you're looking at. So you might need to do the work that we did up there. So that's all that I'm going to go for this video. Hopefully you learn now how to do some waveform properties.